In trigonometry, we work with special angles. Now, special angles, you're supposed to know out of your head or you're supposed to be able to determine them without using a calculator. So special angles, no calculator. So if it's no calculator, that means that you need to be able to do it either in your head or some other method. So the method I'm going to show you in this video is one that I really enjoy using, and that is how to do special angles using your fingers. All right. So super simple. The first thing that we need to know is what our special angles are. And our special angles are the angles 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. So those are our five special angles that we need to be able to know off by heart. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our fingers. So we're going to take our hand and we're going to face it towards us as I'm doing right now. Okay, so we have five fingers and we have five special angles. So each finger is going to represent a special angle. We have our zero degree angle, our 30 degree angle, our 45 degree angle, our 60 degree angle, and our 90 degree angle. So we have zero, 30, 45, 60, 90. For sine, what you're going to do is you're going to put down whichever angle finger you want to calculate. All right, so for sine, you're going to square root the number of fingers at the bottom and you're going to put it over two. For cos, exact same process, you pick your angle, you put down your finger, and then you're going to square root the fingers above and divide it by two. So that's how we're going to work with sine and cos. Then for tan, you do the exact same thing with the angle. You pick your angle, put down your finger, but then you flip your hand around and you square root the number of fingers at the top over the square root of the fingers at the bottom. 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, denominator 2, sine, bottom, cos, top. Done. All right, so if I wanted to calculate sine 0 degrees, I'm going to take my 0 degree finger and I'm going to put it down. Sine is the bottom. So how many fingers do I have at the bottom over here? How many fingers are left over? I have 0 fingers left over. So that means that the top of my fraction will be the square root of 0 over and the denominator is 2. So what is the square root of 0? The square root of 0 is 0 divided by 2. And 0 divided by 2 is 0. So therefore, I know that sine 0 degrees is equal to 0. All right, let's do another one. So if I have cos 0, right? So cos 0, put down my 0 degrees. Cos now is the top, so my top fingers. So how many fingers do I have at the top? I have 4. So that means that I'm going to have the square root of 4 over, the denominator is always 2, so over 2. The square root of 4 is 2, 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So therefore, cos 0 degrees is in fact equal to 1. Let's try sine 30. So we have our fingers, so sine 30, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, I put down my 30 degree finger. All right, so now how many fingers sine is the bottom? How many fingers are at the bottom of sine of this 30 degree finger? So there's one, which means that I'm going to have the denominator, the numerator will be the square root of one over, it's always over two. So that is equal to the square root of one, which is one over two. So that means, therefore, that sine 30 degrees is equal to 1 over 2. What about cos 30 degrees? So cos 30 degrees, again, so it will still be my 30 degree finger. So I put down my 30 degree finger, but cos is now the top. So that means how many fingers do I have at the top of this 30 degree? I have 3. So the top is the square root of the number of fingers I have which is 3, so I have the square root of 3 over, and the denominator is 2. So I have the square root of 3 over 2, which can't be simplified any further, so therefore that means that cos 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now, what about sine or cos 45? So 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, I put down my 45 degree finger. 
All right, so now I want to do sine 45 degrees. So if I'm doing sine 45 degrees, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, how many fingers do I have underneath the 45? I have two fingers underneath the 45, which means that I'm going to have the square root of two divided by or over, and the denominator is two. That can't be simplified any further. So therefore, sine 45 degrees is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. What about cos 45? Now, cos 45 is actually the co-ratio to sine 45, so we know that they'll be equal. But what if you didn't know that or you didn't remember that? No problem. So for cos 45, still 45 degree finger is down. How many fingers do I have above the 45? I mean, I have two. How many fingers do I have above the 45 degree finger? I have two, which means that it will also be the square root of two, two fingers over two. So therefore, that means that cos 45 is also equal to the square root of two over two. Now, what about sine 60? Zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. So I put down my 60 degree finger. All right, so sine 60 degrees. How many fingers are below the 60 degrees? There are three fingers below the 60 degrees. So that means that it will be the square root of three. The denominator is over two. So that can't be simplified any further. So that means therefore that sine 60 degrees is equal to the square root of three over two. What about cos 60? So cos 60 degrees, so now I have, here's my 60 degree finger. How many fingers are above that finger that's down? I can see that there's one finger above. So it's going to be the square root of that finger. So the square root of one over the denominator is two. The square root of one is one over two. So that means that cos 60 degrees is equal to a half. Finally, if we do 90 degrees, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90 degrees, so I want to calculate sine and cos 90, so sine 90 degrees, I'm going to put down my 90 degree finger, all right, and I'm going to see how many fingers do I have below this 90 degrees, so I have 4, so that means that I will have the square root of 4 over the denominator is 2. The square root of 4 is 2 divided by 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that means, therefore, that sine 90 degrees is equal to 1. What about cos 90 degrees? So cos 90 degrees, I still put down my 90 degree finger. But now, how many fingers are there bef above that? There are 0 fingers. So that means that I would have the square root of 0. Divided by 2. So the square root of 0 is 0 divided by 2. So that means that that is 0. So cos 90 degrees is in fact equal to 0. All right, so now we've done sine and we've done cos. Now what about tan? Well, we know that tan as an identity is sine over cos, which means that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. So now what we have done is with our fingers, we've said cos is the top and sine is the bottom. So that means if cos is the top and sine is the bottom, if I flip my fingers around, that would put sine at the top and cos at the bottom, which would in fact give me 10. So that means that I'm going to keep my angles exactly the same. I'm going to start my process exactly the same as what I have done, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90, except I'm going to flip it around. So now. I'm not going to do all five of the angles because you can practice those by yourself. I'm just going to do maybe two or three of them. So if we look at our angles, let's work with tan 30 degrees. So tan 30 degrees, all right, tan is equal to sine over cos. So tan 30 degrees, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, zero 30 degrees, put down my 30 degree angle, and then I'm going to flip it around. All right, so now how many fingers do I have here? One, how many fingers do I have here? Three. So now I'm not going to put my fraction over two like I did with sine and cos. I'm going to put sine over cos to give me 10. 
So I'm going to say it again. So I want to calculate tan 30 degrees. So I go 0, 30 degrees. So I put down my 30 degrees and I'm going to flip my fingers around. So that means how many fingers are at the top here? There's one finger. So I'm going to have the square root of 1 over how many fingers are at the bottom? There are three fingers at the bottom. So I'm going to have the square root of 3. So the square root of 1 is equal to 1. Over the square root of 3, I need to keep it as the square root of 3. However, to rationalize the denominator, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 3. So that means that I'll have the square root of 3 over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is 3. So therefore, tan 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 3. What about tan 45 degrees? So 0, 30, 45. So I put down my 45. All right, so now I do that and I'm going to flip my fingers around. So it's going to be the square root of sine over the square root of cos. So the square root of sine, I have two fingers at the top. So that means it's going to be the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 2 at the bottom as well because I have two fingers for cos. So the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 is equal to 1. So therefore, tan 45 degrees is equal to 1. What about tan 60? So, 0, 30, 45, 60. Put down your 60 and flip your finger around because tan is sine over cos. How many fingers do I have at the top? I have three fingers at the top. So it's the square root of 3 over how many fingers do I have at the bottom? I have one finger at the bottom. So that's the square root of 1. We can't square root 3, so we're going to leave it as the square root of 3 over the square root of 1, which is 1. So therefore, tan 60 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 1, which is just the square root of 3. All right, so just as a quick recap, 0, 30, 45, 60, 90 degrees. For sine, what you're going to do is you're going to put down whichever angle finger you want to calculate. All right, so for sine, you're going to square root the number of fingers at the bottom and you're going to put it over 2. For cos, exact same process, you pick your angle, you put down your finger, and then you're going to square root the fingers above and divide it by 2. So that's how we're going to work with sine and cos. Then for tan, you do the exact same thing with the angle. You pick your angle, put down your finger, but then you flip your hand around and you square root the number of fingers at the top over the square root of the fingers at the bottom. Now, obviously, there are plenty of other ways to learn this. You can learn your triangle. You can learn your uh, graph. You can use your calculator and cheat and just write out the answer. But this was just a way that I really enjoy doing special angles and I hope that you enjoy it too. Let me know what you think about this method. Does it work? Doesn't it work? What do you think? Remember, the more you do, the better you'll be.